Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really interesting short little unboxing, well, slash unzipping of a pouch video to share with you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna be honest with you, I have already been in this. Uh, I opened it up on a weekend, which is, I don't normally record on a weekend, and this arrived, right? So it's not like I was gonna wait until a Monday to open this up. No, I was gonna look at it. So I have robbed you of the initial, the true, you know, sort of first experience. Um, but there are a few things here that I want to point out. This is just a first impressions video. I want to share you guys my first impression of this knife because it is definitely something a lot of people are paying attention to right now. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So I'm sure you guys saw here, it says War Junkie by Todd Begg on the outside. Yeah, a lot of you know what this is already. This is the... War Junkie Citadel, a production Citadel. Holy moly, this was ambitious. <laughs> this was in collaboration with Artisan Cutlery. Now this is mine, I paid full price for it, got in line like everybody else and pre-ordered it. It is a very impressive knife in a lot of different aspects. A lot of you guys I'm wondering, doesn't, I thought Todd Begg, like, doesn't he, like, do U.S. customs? Oh, yes, this is based on a custom knife. The true original custom Citadel was a multi-thousand dollar knife. Uh, so in order to get it down to 450 I believe, I think there's $450, in order to get it down to $450, they uh, collaborated, or he collaborated, with Artisan Cutlery. And Artisan Cutlery did a production version of this. This is gorgeous. Uh, the uh, the satin finish on the blade is definitely a step above what we normally see from Artisan Cutlery. Uh, I prefer normally I prefer a tumbled finish unless it's something special, and I, I would I would put this in the category of something special. It's not perfectly mirror polished. I think the Citadel, the original Citadel, was mirror polished, um, but it is close, very high, at least a very very high polish. Uh, we have in, insane inlay work um, in that it is, it, it's ambitious that they tried to do this exactly. Um, now, uh, we're going to go over a few things here that I really, really like. Initially, we're going to take a couple of, again, this is not a review. I'll still do the full comprehensive review a few weeks down the road here, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, specs here. Nine inches overall with a four inch blade. The blade stock is, I think it's at about 190 thousandths there, or 180, something like that. I think this is in like XM24 territory. We'll go ahead and uh, do that real quick just so I can show you guys. Mm, yeah, 186 or so. Oof, big boy, definitely big boy. We have these blue titanium liners. I love that this is a titanium liner lock and not another exposed frame lock. I love this, nice, big, chunky, right? Plenty of engagement. These are plenty thick. The pocket clips are my favorite style, but gosh, does it look good. And you'll notice that we have this, this anno that changes from blue to, it's very distinct, right? Not a trick. It really does change uh, colors as you turn it. And that is the same with the liners all the way around. Very beautiful. There's so much here that is amazing. Um, we have a carbon fiber inlay on the blade, which is kind of nuts. All right. So that's a lot of, you know, everything that I like about it right off the bat. It's very smooth, right? The action, you know, the detent initially feels like it's on the lighter side, but then again, it's also not wanting to readily swing out. It takes quite a bit of force, right? So I think it's just the feel, I think there's just so much material there. Maybe it's deadening the, the, the click a little bit. I don't know, but the flipping action is fine. We have uh, Todd Begg's, you know, flipper tab. This area right here, while it does look plenty wide enough, I really wish that he had scalloped out this side or that they had done it. They did it on this side, but you still kind of have to press in there to move it. No double clutch or anything like that. And like I said, you know, the action is really just beautifully smooth. <laughs> uh, really cool. Lots of great here. Big, crazy, robust knife, right? Kind of has that extra look. A lot of people define it as 
gas station. That's because the first stuff that they saw that looked anything like this was from the gas station. So they don't know how to differentiate, right? <laughs> Oh, that was an under the table. That was an under the table toe stomp there. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it it captures that you know real that Todd Bag custom knife look for sure. This side of the knife is absolute perfection. We're getting into the part where I started to look real closely at it. This side of the knife is gorgeous. It's very very nice. And you know, truthfully, I I am actually seeing part of what I was going to point out on the other side now. The, this, it must, it just depends on the light that I'm looking at, but I still want to point this out for people who are curious. Some of the edges of the carbon fiber here are less than perfect. It's not the biggest deal, right? They're still really good as far as like transition from carbon fiber to titanium. And then we've got this little fuller, this little line here, which is beautiful. They've polished it. That's really nice. I love the detail of it, right? And then back to, you know, the, the titanium and then to the carbon fiber. Um, some of the edges, when you look really closely, are not perfect. The carbon fiber itself is very, very good, right? But this is a production knife. Uh, CNC, right? I mean, you'd expect everything to be real smooth. This side has a couple more places, right? Right here is more of what I'm talking about. You can see, like, the lines, like, right here. This is all beautiful. This is really nice. We get up here, a little bit. Bleh. This side of the carbon fiber in the blade... Gorgeous. Really, really nice work there. Really good. This side, eh, right there. Ugh. Little edge there. Now, before everybody starts jumping down Artisan Cutlery's throat or anything like that, again, this is ambitious. This is a crazy, all of these little curvatures, all of these lines, right? Them getting that exactly right. Ah, uh, that's a lot, right? So I, I you know, this is an expensive knife, absolutely. It's not a multi-thousand dollar custom. I can tell you if I had paid multiple thousands of dollars for the, you know, the actual, you know, Todd Begg made Citadel and I saw that, I'd be like, nah, you got to fix this, right? This is a $450 knife, still very, very expensive, right? And a lot of people say, we're in Sabenza territory, we're in Hinderer territory. Those knives don't have this insane, and some of them will have like simple inlays like the, you know, the, the Sabenza and stuff, but this is vastly more complicated, right? So I'm trying to calibrate here. I'm trying to. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of the edges here, uh, and definitely the ugliest part of it is this lip right here. Oh, that's, that's ugly. I don't like that. Um, I still wish it's like, you know, if there's going to be some toothy edges and some weird areas in the inlays, you know, when I look up close, uh, I can choke down a few of those, but I don't like to see an inlay lipping up over the steel, right? Now that's, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of milling that they had to do. They had to do a lot. That's part of the reason. A lot of people say, it's just titanium with carbon fiber and, and that's 35 VN. Why does it cut? It's not just the materials, right? It's how they it's how they execute it. Think about all the milling that was done to make this work. These are these are contoured, right? All this chamfering here. This is way above what we normally see from Artisan Cutlery. Definitely the most ambitious knife I have ever seen produced by Artisan Cutlery. Here's the truth. I think any company. A lot of people are going to say they should have had Riot do it. <laughs> I think any company would have had trouble with this. Truthfully. Uh, you know, even, even Reich, Riot, Max Ace, right? They do beautiful work. This is really complicated stuff, right? We don't normally see, I mean, how often do we see an inlay in the blade? Not very often. I know they exist out there, but not very often. So, little bit disappointing, honestly, as somebody who paid this money. This is mine. I paid for it. I didn't get it given to me, right? Uh, you know, usually people, oh, well, you know, if you pay for it, then they, they try to like, you know, they try to convince themselves that it was worth everything. Now, nah, I, I'm still going to tell you what I think, right? Whether it was given to me for free or whether I pay for it, I'm going to tell you no matter what. Love it. Really cool. I'm still happy I bought it, but this is the kind of stuff that I'm going to point out when I review it. Um, I don't, uh, this is, this is not something that's out of the realm of, like, it's nowhere near where I start to get uncomfortable carrying a knife of this price. So yeah, um, this will go in the pocket for a little bit, kind of, probably just put it through regular paces, right? I'm not, you know, my testing does not include batoning or digging a trench, right? Or keeping a boat 
from drifting out to sea. That's not what I use my knives for, right? I use it for like cutting cardboard and packaging and just regular crap. So I'll tell you guys what I think, but I, I am going to comment on that. Let me know if you have this knife. Did you have, you know, did you have some weirdness? Did you have some chunkiness and little, see what I mean right there? Ooh. Did you have that? I'd like to know. I think that's going to be pretty much it. Expect a full comprehensive review a few weeks down the road. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.